I played The Last of Us Part 2 for two days straight and beat it. And let me tell you, if you're one of those people who are playing it and you think it's a, a masterpiece of fiction, just you wait until you read books or watch movies because you've been missing out and I am envious of you. <laughs> Fucking video games suck. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's gonna be used. I was about to say taken out of context and used, but there's there is no good context. <laughs> In a medium where everything is John Wick. The Last of Us Part 2 is Schindler's List. And just like in that film, there were times when I wasn't sure I could keep going. It is a relentless emotional assault that I suspect will force even the most jaded gamer to feel empathy. Alright, let's give you a breakdown of one of the silliest video game controversies in quite some time. Writer Jeff Kanata is the latest game critic to have maybe, just a touch, overstated the artistic impact of a big budget video game. Comparing The Last of Us Part 2, a game that lovingly simulates detailed brutal violence and stops every now and then to feel sad about it, to Schindler's List, an historical drama about saving lives during the Holocaust and literally one of the most influential pieces of art of all time. That's pretty obviously a bad take. Let's not strip ourselves of our mutual dignity by wasting too much time entertaining the thought that The Last of Us 2 and Schindler's List are in any way comparable. They aren't. It's that simple. In fact, no major mainstream AAA game has come close to the same stratosphere, let alone the same league, as the best movies of all time. Not one AAA video game is better than Gremlins 2 The New Batch. The very nature of what a AAA game is, what it needs to accomplish and who it needs to sell to, precludes any of them from reaching the artistic heights some of their directors so achingly wish for. They're just too much of a product. There are many movies primarily made to be products too, but that is why no serious movie critic would compare the Avengers Endgame to Schindler's fucking list. And in the game industry, where publishers want literally all of the fucking money in the world, they only have time for the big budget, popcorn chewing, product type of entertainment. This is not to say they can't be excellent, entertaining, or even meaningful and artistic, but they are all undoubtedly held back by the very things that define them as AAA games. I've come up with this handy little test for game critics. Uh, it's called the Bobblehead Test, and it goes like this. If you want to compare a video game you're playing to a film with sensitive subject matter, ask yourself this. Would it be equally tasteless to have associated bobblehead merchandise? The Last of Us Part 2, bobbleheads no problem. Sophie's Choice, not so much. Oh Justin, can we photoshop some bobbleheads? No! The reviewer's take was bad, and that's fine. I have no quarrel with Jeff, and he is not the only reviewer to have misfired. I've produced this show weekly for like 10 years. You think they've all been winners? Fuck, friends. I gave Bioshock Infinite a 10 out of 10. I'm literally no fucking better here. I mean, I gave out fewer 10 out of 10s than almost any other reviewer back in my day, which does make me not better but at the very least, fucking superior. People had fun with that Schindler's List quote, let's just put it that way. Commenters, devs, and journalists had a good giggle making their own ludicrous comparisons to highlight both the inaccuracy and mild tastelessness of the sentiment with such lines as, Wii Sports Resort is the Sophie's choice of video games. It was relatively lighthearted, definitely snarky, but one person most assuredly was not laughing. The Last of Us Part 2's very own director, Neil Druckmann, who finally lost it after journalist Jason Scryer said, and I quote, See, Bioshock's audio logs are a lot like the diary of Anne Frank. Druckmann, fighting for the right of critics to compare his work to Schindler's List, unleashed a little wet ball of frustration on Scryer, saying, mm, With all due respect, I find these kinds of ironic jokes to be unproductive at best. We can do better with critical discourse, especially by those of us with thousands of followers, and especially about sensitive subject matter. Mm.
Unfortunately for Druckmann, his holier-than-thou retort was aimed at a journalist who had only recently published a damning account of Naughty Dog's abusive work practices, a fact that Druckmann was well aware of as an acquaintance of the guy. I gotta say, it wasn't a great look for Druckmann to try and embarrass someone who just weeks prior had exposed his studio's harmful and reckless lack of ethics, especially as he was doing it because he was upset people found it funny that his game was compared to a cinematic treasure. Which it is, by the way. It's very funny to compare The Last of Us Part 2 to pretty much any movie that's well written. Look, The Last of Us 2's writing is fine by AAA game standards. But that's a low fucking bar, mate. Unsurprisingly, Druckmann was called out on this a lot by many people who'd like to see Druckmann further comment on allegations of overworked crunch periods and sexual harassment within his company. I mean, he wants to talk about what critical discourse should be, and I'm more than happy to focus the discourse away from jokes and toward the sensitive subject matter of crunch, coerced labour, and basic fucking misconduct. As if to further indicate that this was not about jokes, but about Scryer being too much of a journalist for the game industry's liking, writer-director Corey Volrog, most famous for his work on the PlayStation's God of War series, chimed in and gave the game away. I have to say that lately you come across as a bit of a bully, Jason. I get that your bread and butter is tearing us down, but not everything is about your books and articles. Sometimes it is just about being decent to each other. Corey Bolrog, I say this with all due respect and reverence, but fuck off. Fuck right off, mate. Now look, Jason Scryer and I aren't exactly friends, we've come to blows publicly before, but anyone who pretends he is not one of the few genuinely effective game journalists out there is fucking lying to themselves and everyone else. Like him or not, without him we'd not know the shameful development history of Anthem, the fucked up pattern of racism and exploitation at Nicalis, or indeed the physical and mental harm Naughty Dog inflicts on its staff. He's routinely proven himself as someone who cares about employee happiness, who produces lengthy, detailed, but highly digestible breakdowns of things we need to know about this industry. He's a resource for YouTubers like me, including YouTubers who absolutely hate him, because his library of work has been a valuable resource for pretty much all of us in games media. Like him, don't like him, it doesn't fucking matter. If you deny he hasn't done crucial work, you are simply dishonest. So to see you, Corey, reduce the man's work to tearing us down is fucking pathetic, if I'm being perfectly honest. The very fact you view the accountability his work provides as a teardown pretty much says all that fucking needs to be said about the attitudes toward worker treatment in the game industry. Not to mention how the industry views game journalism as a little more than a glorified extension of its own PR efforts. Critique choking review content embargoes anyone? But this is an attitude that some highfalutin directors in the spoiled upper echelons of the game industry are used to. Unflinching, uncritical praise. And a few of them seem to have picked up some bad fucking attitudes as a result. Just look at Neil and Corey's attitude in this exchange. Their mindset that anything less than adoration and comparisons to Schindler's fucking list is bullying and meanness. It's beyond insulting and tactless that Bullrock says not everything is about Scryer's articles and that sometimes it's just about being decent when Scryer's articles are literally about how the game industry is not being fucking decent. Corey. Reminds me of when I did game reviews full time, developers would say the exact same thing. They'd ignore the content of my work, the critique I'd spend time thinking and writing about, and instead reduce everything to trying to tear devs down because they feel entitled. Entitled to 10 out of 10 scores and wild movie comparisons and interviews where marketing vets the questions and nothing awkward is allowed to be brought up. My God. Do 99.9 fucking percent of interview subjects in the game industry have it fucking easy? Anything close to accountability, and they claim they're being torn down. In fact, that's the exact phrase BioWare used to defend itself from its own allegations of crunch. If it's not a deliberate choice of words, it's a deliberate fucking attitude. A list of films that are closer to The Last of Us Part 2 than Schindler's List, okay? Um, Mad Max. 
Mad Max Road Warrior. Hang on, let's do this again. I should have come up with a list. <laughs> I thought you had a list. I thought I had a list. The point is it's not like <laughs> In my mind, there was this great list. I was gonna go like, you know, um, hostel with acoustic numbers. That's what I was gonna call it at one point. I was gonna say it was closer to Chicken Run. Uh, Samurai Cop, which I'm just watching at the moment. I paused to do this. Um, the point, fucking hell. <laughs> you all know the deal by now. A massively overhyped AAA game is en route. Reviews make it sound like the second coming of Christ, with uncritically presented 10 out of 10 scores and ridiculous film comparisons. And then the game comes out and we discover that rather than the revelation of interactive fiction it was sold as, it's just another video game at the end of the day. It's a routine as old as the industry itself. At the time of talking, I'm waiting for the inevitable battery of think pieces that actually criticise the game. Especially since they won't need to adhere to a ridiculous embargo that banned reviewers from mentioning a whole 12 hours of in-game content and has rendered many 10 out of 10 reviews too vague and poorly justified to be worth a shit. But none of that matters. The Last of Us 2 is here at last to rescue us from the vapidity of usual boring video games with the latest evidence that games are art. Thank God for art. It is here at last. The first ever game to make you feel a bit sad about something. At least for a week before we all decide that no, it's not that great. This obsession with pushing games as a higher form of art and using absolutely the wrong fucking games to do so has led to a number of critical darlings for which the unfettered praise looks absolutely fucking hilarious in hindsight. You need look no further than games from another studio that skates by on its darling status, Quantic Dream. A studio which, by the way, has its own allegations of misconduct and mistreatment of its employees. Heavy Rain isn't just a masterpiece. It's an ingenious step in the right direction. This may very well be the most human game ever made. So reads one of dozens of game reviews in 2010 that called Heavy Rain a masterpiece, a tour de force in game narrative, and proof positive that games could be about more than shooting. What are we gonna do? It's pouring rain. We're gonna get soaked if we spend a day outside. Well, this won't get beat. Little rain never hurt nobody. Come on, let's go play. If you go down the list of reviews at the time, you see the word masterpiece repeated over and over, as well as folks applauding how the game is so different and new. There's a smugness in some of the writing, a beaming pride that video games can finally be considered grown up because Quantic Dream made them respectable at last. Now game journalists can tell their mothers they have a real job because they review art. I have never played anything so momentous and revolutionary as Heavy Rain. In the coming years, I expect the game's influence to be felt throughout the industry in terms of gameplay, storytelling, and interactivity. Fucking hell. Quantic Dream puts forth some truly incredible ideas and concepts as to what a game can be, but they'll stay ideas and concepts until gamers are willing to accept that they deserve more than another GTA or Call of Duty clone. The fucking irony there is the amount of game reviewers claiming we deserve more and that we don't demand better when they're praising Heavy Rain as a masterpiece. Sure gamers, accept that you deserve more than another GTA or Call of Duty. And game reviewers should accept that they deserve more than Heavy Rain. Heavy Rain has, of course, been parodied and lampooned many times in the 10 years since its release, from the terrible Tommy Wiseau-level dialogue to the awkward acting and creepy facial animation, as well as contrived plot twists that had to lie to the player to remain twists. Heavy Rain has never been a masterpiece. As a Dragon's Lair-style adventure, I've always conceded it's a good game, but as the movie it desperately wanted to be, it would be laughed out, genuinely, uproariously, brutally laughed out of any quasi-serious film festival. It's lucky it's a game. Ten years ago, my saying that was blasphemy. 
I was hated, hounded and harried for my daring to say that Heavy Rain was only a good game and not a masterpiece of fiction. In fact, David Cage himself was so shocked that even a single outlet could rate the game below a 9, he felt so entitled to a high score, and game review history gave him plenty of reason to feel that way, he complained at length to my editor-in-chief at the time, actually pointing at the other scores on Metacritic as proof, as evidence that my review was wrong, and that Heavy Rain was brilliant. I think he felt like he was being torn down, and these days, these days there's nothing unique or special or even mildly edgy about calling Heavy Rain a stilted, pompous, poorly written piece of fiction, because that's what it is. I think my favourite, however, still has to be Grand Theft Auto 4, pretty good game. When we look back on it, we can all point out some very obvious and glaring flaws with it. Driving feels weird, the story is often po-faced and overly serious in a way that comes off as awkward and shallow when contrasted against the irreverent backdrop of even the darker rebooted GTA universe. Like most Rockstar games, it's got a lot going for it, but it's held back by archaic game design and an overt focus on aesthetic, cinematic pretensions that try real hard to make everything look like a movie without putting in the narrative and productive work to actually make movie quality entertainment. In short, it's a critically acclaimed AAA game. I thought it was good at the time, but I didn't think GTA 4 was truly excellent, and since its release it's been almost totally eclipsed to GTA 5, a far more memorable and better all-round game. But in 2008, You'd think GTA 4 was Jesus Christ pressed onto a Blu-ray. You'd think GTA 4 had transformed the game industry for fucking ever. You would think GTA 4 was the culmination of everything video games had been working toward as a medium. You'd think GTA 4 was Finn Balor's abs. GTA 4 gives us characters and a world with a level of depth previously unseen in gaming and elevates its story from a mere shoot-em-up to an Oscar-caliber drama. Reads a once notorious IGN review. Every facet of Rockstar's new masterpiece is worthy of applause. Without question, Grand Theft Auto 4 is the best game since Legend of Zelda, Ocarina of Time. And as far as movie comparisons go, the amount of times GTA 4 was compared to Godfather, my fucking God. Father. Incidentally, I gave GTA 4 an 8 out of 10 back in the day and heard through the grapevine that Rockstar was very offended, claiming I underrated it because they were used to their games getting a baseline of 9. It was the first time I upset a game developer with a low ball 8 out of 10 score, but disappointingly, it wasn't the last. It's almost as if there are a lot of game studios who feel like they deserve automatically perfect scores and feel undermined when their artistic genius, and more importantly their authority, face is the slightest challenge. Then there was that whole Citizen Kane thing from the mid-2000s. When will gaming have its Citizen Kane? Is this the Citizen Kane of gaming? Metroid Prime is the Citizen Kane of games! A bunch of pundits who hadn't watched Citizen Kane, no one has, comparing everything they fucking could to Citizen fucking Kane. For the wrong reasons, None of them knew why they were comparing this shit to Citizen Kane. They don't know why Citizen Kane is the Citizen Kane of movies, let alone which video game is the Citizen Kane of video games. Stick to comparing everything to Dark Souls. Just compare a game to a game. It's the only way you're not gonna look silly. The industry is at once desperate to render all its video games into cheap soulless products and be considered a form of high art. The two goals are forever at odds. The Last of Us 2 is actually an incredible example of how narrative achievements in games are undermined by their factory-built nature. On the one hand, we're supposed to believe that The Last of Us 2 is an unflinching critique of the cycle of violence designed not so much to be fun as to be chilling. On the other, it also has an ammo capacity upgrade as a pre-order bonus, incentivizing an early purchase by making you better able to do the bad murders that the game says are bad. It just doesn't work really, does it? The Last of Us has pins and t-shirts and statues and toys, the last time I checked, you can't buy adorably angry anime figures of Schindler's List characters. Not official ones, anyway. As much as The Last of Us 2 might want to break out from the shackles of being a mainstream video game with a particular audience that expects a certain amount of fun gameplay, it can't. Its very existence is the shackle. An issue I think I'll be talking about in its own episode, probably next week unless something happens, like Bethesda does anything. But suffice to say, for now, just 
don't with the film comparisons. Video games aren't movies, get over it. And it's actually embarrassing when you try and convince me a game is good by saying it's like something in a medium traditionally considered to be better than games. That's especially true when movie critics do not pay video games the same respect, often using the term video game pejoratively to describe bad cinema. To date, even the most compelling writing in the mainstream game industry is nowhere near the level of a high quality film nowhere near. When you go indie, of course, you start to find better examples that aren't stymied by committee design and a need to make every considerable dollar at market. But even then, the cinematic comparisons need to be scaled the fuck back. But then again, a lot of those games aren't necessarily compared to films because those games aren't desperately trying to be them. Any comparisons are fated to become hilariously outdated months, weeks, days after the absurd hypes die down if not immediately. So just don't do it. By the way, one last note. Uh, the Last of Us Part Two appears to have upset everybody uh, across the political spectrum. Uh, and there are a lot of right wing people uh, and sort of the status quo warriors and the people who are just upset when something isn't 100% custom tailor made for them. There are those people who are review bombing it and saying, oh, they've got women in it and they kiss another woman. And oh, that one has too many muscles. And oh, there's a trans character. And obviously I'm not on that side of things. I like to suck cocks and balls. I just want to make that clear because like I said, everyone or most people who aren't just sort of in love with Sony. The only people who have ever even vaguely liked The Last of Us Part 2 uh, are people who have only ever played The Last of Us Part 1. So... <laughs> Why am I doing this today? Why am I going out of my way to make what's gonna be a bad week worse? Because I'm talking about The Last of Us Part 2 like for a lot of this week and none of it's discourse that's gonna go well. Why am I doing this? This is some real self-loathing manifesting as an invitation to ruin my day! Thank God for me! <laughs> Fucking hell.